Today is January 12, 2024. The time is 9.21 a.m. I want you to just follow along with me. I want to connect some dots here. I want to make a point and let's see if we could come to the same conclusion. We're starting here with this article from the Jewish Nash News Syndicate. The Zionist Organization of America honors Trump, Hale's best friend Israel's ever had in the White House. The former president urges greater support for Israel, including among Jewish Americans. November 15, 2022. There were standing ovations in abundance at Chelsea Pierce on Manhattan's West Side Sunday night as former President Donald Trump received the oldest pro-Zionist organization in America's highest honor. Morton Klein, president of the Zionist Organization of America, bestowed his Theodore Herzl medallion on the 44th, 45th U.S. president for his achievements on behalf of Israel and world jewelry. The ZOA, which celebrated its 125th anniversary Sunday, rarely awards a Herzl medallion. Past recipients include Winston Churchill and Arthur Balford. The Times of Israel, Nikki Haley to be honored by World Jewish Congress for calling out bias in UN. Former US ambassador to get annual Theodore Herzl Award after she proved to be a giant and pointing out anti-Israel discrimination at international body. Former US ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley will be honored by the World Jewish Congress. Haley will receive the World Jewish Congress's annual Theodore Herzl Award recognizing individuals who work to promote Herzl's ideals for a safer, more tolerant world for the Jewish people, WJC said in a statement, October 24th, 2019. Jerusalem Post, UN Secretary General receives WJC Theodore Herzl Award. Antonio Gutierrez noted that a steady stream of prejudice has continued to blight our world. Anti-Semitic assaults, harassment, and vandalism, and Holocaust denial. November 10th, 2020. On Monday, November 9th, Antonio Gutierrez, current Secretary General of the United Nations, accepted the World Jewish Congress highest honor the WJC Theodore Herzl Award. This is World Jewish Congress. Dr. Albert Borla, chairman and CEO of Pfizer, accepts the WJC Theodore Herzl Award. The award established in 2012 recognizes outstanding individuals who work to promote Herzl's ideals through international support for Israel and enhanced understanding of Jewish history, culture, and peoplehood. The past 20 months have been without question the strangest time in our lives. The entire world just stopped, Ambassador Lauder said in honoring Dr. Borla. In an unbelievable short time, vaccines went to trial and were produced. Pfizer was at the forefront of this effort. Here's another article from the Times of Israel. Joe Biden to be honored by World Jewish Congress. Outgoing Vice President to be awarded Theodore Herzl Award, Ron Lauder says. Alkali going to a true friend of Israel and the Jewish people. November 9th, 2016. Vice President Joe Biden will be honored by the World Jewish Congress with an award named for the founder of political Zionism. During 
remarks by President Trump during an update on Operation Warp Speed. Operation Warp Speed is unequaled, unrivaled anywhere in the world. And leaders of other countries have called me to congratulate us on what we've been able to do. We've helped many countries with their ventilators and all of the problems they were having. And, like to, and I'd like to congratulate everyone involved in this effort. It's been an incredible effort. As a result of Operation Warp Speed, Pfizer announced on Monday that its China virus vaccine is more than 90% effective. This far exceeds any and all expectations. Nobody thought they'd get to that level. And we have others coming, which we think will be at equal level, maybe more if that's possible. In July, my administration reached an agreement with Pfizer to provide 1.95 billion to support the mass manufacturing and distribution of 100 million doses with the option to purchase a total of 600 million doses shortly thereafter. Our <clears throat> investment will make it possible for the vaccine to be provided by Pfizer free of charge. Pfizer said it wasn't part of warp speed but that turned out to be unfortunate misinformation. They are a part. That's why <clears throat> we gave them 1.95 million billion dollars. And it was an unfortunate mistake that they made when they said that. Executive order. Now this is the data. This is the White House, September 9th, 2021, executive order requiring coronavirus disease 2019 vaccines for federal employees. COVID-19 vaccines are widely available in the United States. They protect people from getting infected and severely ill, and they significantly reduce the likelihood of hospitalization and death. As of the date of this order, one of the COVID-19 vaccines, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, also known as Comerity, has received approval from the Food and Drug Administration, and two others, the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and Janssen COVID-19, have been authorized by the FDA for emergency use. The FDA has determined that all three vaccines meet its rigorous standards for safety, effectiveness, and manufacturing quality the health and safety of the federal workforce and the health and safety of members of the public with whom they interact are foundational to the efficiency of the civil service. I have determined that ensuring the health and safety of the federal workforce and the efficiency of the civil service requires immediate action to protect the federal workforce and individuals interacting with the federal workforce. Force. It is essential that federal employees take all available steps to protect themselves and avoid spreading COVID-19 to their co-workers and members of the public. The CDC has found that the best way to do it is to be vaccinated. The Safer Federal Workers Task Force, established by Executive Order 13991 of January 20, 2021, protecting the federal workforce requiring mass requirements, has issued important guidance to protect the federal workforce and individuals interacting with the federal workforce. Section two, mandatory coronavirus disease 2019 vaccines for federal employees. Each agency, each agency shall implement to the extent consistent with applicable law, a program to require COVID-19 vaccination for all of its federal employees with exceptions only as required by law. The task force shall issue guidance within seven days of the date of this order on agency implementation of this requirement for all agencies covered by this order. This is a document that is dated February 15, 2023. And it is from Joseph A. Lepidol, MD. Sorry if I messed his name up. But I'm gonna just read you part of this 
document. As Florida's Surgeon General, it was in the public's best interest to issue guidance for using messenger RNA COVID-19 vaccines in children and in young men based on the absence of a health benefit in clinical trials. This guidance followed preliminary data analysis by the Florida Department of Health. We continue to refine and expand these findings, including addressing methodological issues inherent to evaluating vaccine safety and efficacy. In addition to Florida's analysis of messenger RNA COVID-19 vaccines, academic researchers throughout our country and around the globe have, been, have seen troubling safety signals of adverse events surrounding this vaccine. Their concerns are corroborated by the substantial increase in various reports from Florida, including life-threatening conditions. We have never seen this type of response following previous mass vaccination efforts pushed by the federal government. Even the H1N1 vaccine did not trigger this sort of response. In Florida alone, we saw a 1,700% increase in reports after the release of the COVID-19 vaccine, compared to an increase of 400% in vaccine administrations for the same period. The reporting of life-threatening conditions increased 4,400%. This increase in adverse events compared to the present increase in vaccine use further explains the significant uptick we are seeing in various reports. These findings are unlikely to be related to changes in reporting given their magnitude and more likely reflect a pattern of increased risk from messenger RNA COVID-19 vaccines. We need unbiased research as many in the academic community have performed to better understand these vaccines' short and long-term effects. According to a recent study, messenger RNA COVID-19 vaccines are associated with an increased risk of serious adverse events, including coagulation disorders, acute cardiac injuries, Bell's palsy, and encephalitis, to name a few. This risk was one in 550, much higher than other vaccines. To claim these vaccines are safe and effective while minimizing and disregarding the adverse events is unconscionable. Communication between physicians and patients is a standard ethical practice that is fundamental to public health. Healthcare professionals should have the ability to accurately communicate the risks and benefits of a medical intervention to their patients without fear of retaliation by the federal government. In another letter, Florida State Surgeon General calls for halt in the use of COVID-19 messenger RNA vaccines. On December 6, 2023, State Surgeon General Dr. Joseph A. Lepetto sent a letter to the United States Food and Drug Administration, Dr. Robert Califf, and Center for Disease Control and Prevention Director, Dr. Mandy Cohen, regarding questions pertaining to the safety assessments and the discovery of billions of DNA fragments per dose of the Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 messenger RNA vaccines. The Surgeon General outlined concerns regarding nucleic acid contaminants in the approved Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 messenger RNA vaccines, particularly in the presence of lipid nanoparticle complexes and simian virus 40, SV40 promoter. And I'm going to stop right there and go directly to the simian virus 40. Now, this is emergent human pathogen, pathogen simian virus 40, and its role in cancer. And we're seeing a copyright date of 2004 on here. And it says right here, it says the polymovirus simian virus 40, SV40, is a potent DNA tumor virus. And mounting evidence suggests that it is an emergent human pathogen. Now, I want to go 
and talk a little bit more about Zionism. And I might have gotten a little ahead of my, um, so anyway, I'm going to go right here. Let's go up. Here we are. For 16 years, I want to show you some dates. For 16 years, this here, UNGA Resolution 3379, Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, was in effect from December, from November 1975, from November 10th, 1975, up until December 16th, 1991. So for 16 years, for 16 years, Zionism was considered a form of racism and racial discrimination. For 16 years, that was the knowledge. That was the word coming out of the United Nations. So what changed? Did anything change this thought process that made this UN resolution a reality? What changed in the dynamics between the parties engaged in this battle? This is when the resolutions was overturned, but here, the United States put a lot of efforts into this. Now here's public law 9990, August 15th, 1985, condemning the passage of resolution 3379 in the United Nations General Assembly on, on November 10th, 1975, and urging the United States ambassador and the United States delegation to take all appropriate actions necessary to erase this shameful resolution from the record of the United Nations. Whereas on December on November 10, 1975, the 30th session of the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 3379, which sought to legitimize the lie first perpetrated at the United Nations General Assembly by representatives of the Union of the Socialist Soviet Republics in 1963 that Zionism is a form of racism, and whereas Resolution 3379 of the 30th United Nations General Assembly directly contravenes the most basic principles and purposes of the United Nations Charter and undermines universal human rights values and principles, and whereas the infamous resolution threatens directly the integrity, legitimacy of a member state by singling out for slanderous attack, the national movement which gave birth to the state of Israel. Whereas the adoption of Resolution 3379 by the 30th United Nations General Assembly constitutes one of that organization's darkest moment and may fuel the flames of anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. Whereas the United States Congress sharply condemned the passage of Resolution 3379 10 years ago, and that said resolution encourages anti-Semitism by wrongly associating and equating Zionism with racism. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate, the House of Representatives of the United States of America, and Congress assembled that the Congress soundly denounces and condemns any linkage between Zionism and racism considers UNGA Resolution 3379 to be a permanent smear upon the reputation of the United Nations and to be totally inconsistent with the organization's declared purpose and principles. And here we have another resolution. This is House Resolution 894 in the House of Representatives, December 5th, 2023. And I just want to go directly to the, get right directly to the point, clearly and firmly states that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. And it states right here that Vice President Joe Biden will be honored by the World Jewish Congress with an award named for the founder of a political Zionism. This is a political party that we're not allowed to condemn. I'm going to leave it there.